Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A man's in the hospital this morning after being shot at a luxury apartment complex near downtown. Now San Antonio police say a citywide search for the shooter is underway. Details on how you can help. There's a car going westbound pushing the freight car on a red on the escape. The nation waiting for answers after Christmas magic turns into tragedy in Wisconsin. The latest on that investigation coming up in your morning headlines. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. The San Antonio Education Partnership is hosting a college enrollment feast this morning. They're going to be talking about everything from applications to financial aid. We're going to explain what you need to know in just a bit. And those in need of Thanksgiving meal essentials are getting a little extra help from a local nonprofit. Coming up, details on their Thanksgiving food drive. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, November 22nd. Hi, Sarah. Hi, I'm so happy to be filling in for Stephanie today. And I really loved this weekend, but I didn't like the humidity, Justin Horn. And this morning when I walked out, it was kind of gone and much cooler. It is out of here, briefly at least. We had a front move through last night. The winds were howling. We got some really gusty winds. Those winds have since calmed down, and we've got some pretty nice weather right now. The sun's starting to pop out after some morning cloudiness. 56 degrees at the airport. North northeast Julie winds in around 10 miles per hour. Still going to be a little breezy today, but not windy. And that dew point, the dew point is lower. It's at 33, so that dry area is starting to move in. We should top out close to 70 today before falling back into the 50s and eventually 40s by tomorrow morning. Uh, looking at the temperatures around the area, we're in the 40s and 50s. A few 40s left on the map. Lost Maples at 46, 48 in Holotus. 56, New Braunfels, 53, Canyon Lake. And you can see some of those thin high clouds still over top of us. But we'll get uh, we'll get enough sun today to push those temperatures up again, close to 70. Here in town, 56, as we mentioned, dew point is at 33. Pollen count is in mold. 710, it's in the moderate category. Everything else is low, but molds did jump up today. Just a heads up. All right, uh, headlines. This is what we're looking for this week. Partly cloudy and mild today. Front arrives on Thanksgiving. This brings a pretty good chance of rain. It's going to be cooler, breezy. We could see uh, some showers and storms out of that. And then by the weekend, another chance for rain, too. So this is a busy week. I know a lot of people are traveling. We're going to break down the travel forecast for you. Come down, coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Justin, thank you. Right now, taking a look at Transcott, it wasn't a normal morning commute, but we have seen our fair share of traffic on this Monday before Thanksgiving. Things pretty light right now. I-10 at Frio with the city in the background. We're going to take a look at today's 9 at 9. Days after Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted of all charges after killing two men and hurting a third, the teenager tells Fox News he's not a racist person and supports Black Lives Matter. The verdict sparked debates across the country, some people declaring injustice, others praising the decision as upholding the Second Amendment. Closing arguments are set for this morning in the trial of three men accused of murdering Ahmaud Arbery last year. The panel of 12 jurors are expected to hear from prosecution and attorneys for each defendant before deliberations begin on the multiple charges each man faces. After months of back and forth between progressive and moderate Democrats, President Biden's Build Back Better plan passed the House last week and now faces a tough time making it through the Senate after House Republicans unanimously voted against the legislation. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says the goal is to have the BBB passed by Christmas. Beto O'Rourke has his eye on the Texas governor's seat, but says he does not need any outside help with his campaign. He declined to invite President Joe Biden to campaign alongside him, pushing a message of nonpartisan unity in his upcoming bid for the highest office in Texas. Austria is now under a nationwide lockdown in an effort to combat COVID-19. The safety measure was met with large protests over the weekend, an estimated 40,000 people taking part in anti-government demonstrations. Several people were hurt, including two police officers. The Austrian government's message, holiday joy, is for the immunized. Disney World in Florida has dropped its employee vaccine mandate following a change in state law. Florida companies are now prohibited from mandating that all employees get vaccinated, instead giving options like regular testing and masking or exemptions for reasons like future pregnancy. The new Florida law calls for fines of as much as $50,000 per violation for large employers. 
Some progress in unclogging supply chains around the world. The number of container ships waiting to unload at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach down, but still near record levels. Major American retailers now say they have what they need to make it through the holidays. But experts warn things likely won't get back to normal until sometime next year. AAA predicts more than 53 million people will travel for Thanksgiving this year. That's up 13 percent from last year. Even more dramatic is the increase in air travel, expected to rise 80 percent from last year. This as bleak weather predictions for the Northeast are causing concern for airlines. Their message, pack extra patience this year. A number of American artists, new and old, waking up with a new trophy on their shelves. The American Music Awards full of glitz and glam from brand new artists like Olivia Rodrigo and decades old legends like New Edition. Taylor Swift took home two awards, bringing her total to 34 AMAs, extending her lead as the artist with the most wins of all time. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Thanksgiving just three days away, and a local nonprofit is making sure families have a special meal. The nonprofit Fuerza Unida is hosting a Thanksgiving turkey drive this morning, and members and volunteers are distributing boxes of food this morning. Let's say good morning to Tiffany Huertas, who's live with more on why the organization to decided to do this. Tiffany, what will they be giving out this morning? Good morning, Mark and Sarah. A lot of great food. Just check it out. Members of the organization and volunteers have been busy. Check out all the food that they've already packed. We're seeing mashed potatoes. We're seeing corn. We're seeing bread. We're seeing rice. We're right now at 710 New Laredo Highway. And to talk more about this event is Petra Mata, the director of Fuerza Unida. Good morning. Thank you so Good much morning. for joining us. No, no, no. Thank you so much to cover this uh, activity. You know, I think uh, for Fuerza Unida is very important what we do it. Um, and this is our organization that was formed in 1990, based in one of the Levi's, the Lord's, uh, one of the Levi's, uh, a company closed down here in San Antonio in 1990. And we are lay off 1,150 workers, uh, displaced at one minute. So we decided to organize it because Levi's were already, uh, closed down, uh, 26 plants. So we said, you know, enough is enough. And we get it organized because the majority of the, were women, you know, and, uh, uh, some of that only immigrants, you know, and, and, uh, at that time we don't know that we have our rights. So that's what we get organizing. So you've all been helping this community here for a long time. What does this food mean to people here in this side of San Antonio? Okay, I think that uh, seeing the, the, the necessity, I think this is not a, uh, uh, something that you want to do because you want to, uh, hey, we, we can do it, you don't know. The necessity in San Antonio is, is too strong. You know, at this point, because all the pandemia, all the virus, all the people that got, they, they, they died, you know, all the people that were in the hospital, you know, all the people that were, uh, we losing a lot of people. So and the pandemia, you know, give us a, a like example that we need to uh, be prepared, you know, and take care of ourselves. So, especially, you know, to use a mask, mask, you know, and protect you and protect the, the you, you, the people, the communities, you know. And who donated all this food? This is a lot of boxes <laughs> yeah. we're giving out today. Okay, well, today and tomorrow, we, we, the goal, the, the is, is to, uh, distribute 200 boxes. Okay, and we don't do it by ourselves, let me tell you, okay? We always need support. We need support for everybody, for even the, for the community. At this point, we get donated uh, uh, some turkeys from uh, um, District 4, uh, Dr. Adriana Rocha, and then uh, the legacy at the Foundation of Cesar Chavez, and then the comprehensive home health and, uh, and health pass, uh, help us a lot, a lot with this situation and the, uh, the turkeys. So that's a, a blessing for Fuerza Unida, because in the past, we just give it like a 50 or a little bit more, but this time we're giving 200. That's a, oh, that's a, a privilege that, that we, that we had to appreciate it. Well, a lot of, a lot of families are going to be very happy and thankful this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. And in the next half hour, we're going to break down a little bit more of how they're impacting this community. Mark, Sarah, back to you.
Tiffany, thank you very much. Well, the San Antonio Education Partnership is hosting their college enrollment feast this morning starting at 10 a.m. The event is a great opportunity for anyone looking to clear their plate of financial aid, essays, applications, scholarships, and TASFA, and other steps for college enrollment. Uh, Max Massey joins us live from Cafe College over on El Paso Street here in San Antonio. Max, good morning to you. What can students and families expect? Good morning, guys. They can expect a lot here today. It's easy. You walk in the doors, come up to the registration table. You find out what you need to do. You can find some cool pens, some cool pins. Joined here with Elizabeth. So, Elizabeth, why are you guys doing this? So we're doing this in order to assist our students who need assistance with financial aid applications, admissions applications, essays, things like that. Now, college enrollment just around the corner. Yes. What do families, what do students need to bring when they come here? They'll need their uh, 2020 tax information and then any login information for any sites that they use for admissions and financial aid. Now, why exactly are you doing this? We know a lot of first generation students here in San Antonio. Yes, so because we do have a lot of first generation students, we know that they don't always have the support that they need. Um, folks in their circle haven't done this before. So Cafe College is here to serve those students and provide them with that support. That is fantastic. We always do a lot of stories on local economy, growing more and more businesses. What does it mean for our local economy to have programs like this? So what it means for our economy is that we are building our talent here within San Antonio. So we're building up that talent. And so then it's going to stay here and help to grow that local economy um, and help our community as a whole. Fantastic. Hours? When can people show up? Uh, from 10 to 2. Okay. Fantastic. Today and tomorrow? Today and tomorrow. Awesome. Elizabeth, thank you so much. Thank you. So guys, come on down. Calm and quiet now. We do expect a line soon. Remember to bring everything that Elizabeth just talked about. If you have any questions, we're going to have those answers. Just head to ksat.com. Max Massey, thank you so much. Right now it is 9.09, .09, about 55 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. The house on the city's east side left in shambles after an overnight fire. What officials say sparked the blaze after the break. Plus, thieves now the unlawful owners of some high-end handbags after raiding a Louis Vuitton store. Details on where this happened coming up in your morning headlines. Justin Horn will have our Thanksgiving forecast why rain may be a possibility on Thursday. He'll let us know when we come back. Top stories are following today. A home on the city's east side in need of repairs after a little family fun turned into a major emergency. Fire officials say a bonfire is to blame for sparking the blaze. Take a look at the scene. Firefighters got the call around 1130 last night and responded to a home on Vine Street near South Walters. When they arrived, they could see heavy flames showing through the roof. They were worried about it spreading to the home next door, but firefighters were able to knock it out quickly. Everyone at the house was able to get out safely, but the house sustained severe damage. The man's in the hospital this morning with a gunshot wound in the stomach. Now authorities are looking for who did it. This happened at an apartment complex on Broadway, Broadway right across from the Pearl. The complex is called 1800 Broadway, and the shooting happened inside one of the apartments around 630 last night. A sergeant on scene with SAPD said a group of people were inside one of the units when there was an argument. That's when police say shots were fired. The victim was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. The suspect took off. No arrests have been confirmed right now, so the sergeant is warning others to use caution in the area. They say the suspect could still be armed, and the search for the shooter is now citywide. In your other morning headlines, the latest on the driver that plowed through that Christmas parade in Wisconsin. A marijuana bus worth tons of money and a football team can't hear the cheers, but they can still feel the excitement of a win. David Sears is here. Good morning. Good morning. David. Yeah, a lot of wins. Matter of fact, and they got one game left that could be the ultimate victory. We'll have that for you in just a second, but first let's get to this. Folks in Waukesha, Wisconsin, waking up today, still dealing with that tragedy yesterday when someone drove right through a Christmas parade. And we just got an update on that someone. Police have yet to identify him, but investigators are now looking into whether or not he was trying to get away from a crime that involved an argument and a knife when he drove down the parade route, killing at least five people and hurting another 40, including at least a dozen children. Those are the latest numbers. The driver plowed through the parade without warning. He caught so many off guard, people stunned at what they witnessed. And then the next thing I heard were screams and turned my head and saw the car come and plow into the band. It hit at least two people right away, rolled over both of them, and then continued down the road. All I heard were screaming and then people yelling out their children's names. 
As the driver took off, leaving that path of death and destruction on the parade route, one police officer was able to open fire. No word on if he hit the vehicle. Police do have that red SUV and one person of interest in custody. They're looking to see what that person escaping from another crime, as we just told you. All right. Remembering in the movies, some thieves used all kinds of sophisticated tools to steal stuff, repel through the ceiling, all sneaky stuff. Not anymore. You're looking at thieves just walking into a Louis, a Louis Vuitton store inside a mall in Illinois. You can see the customer right there. He's just like backing out. So I'm just going to go to the back of the store. Y'all do your thing. They started grabbing stuff off the shelves and then running out. Customers just kind of moving out of the way, as we showed you, along with the workers. About 14 suspects. They got away with $100,000 worth of items. They got in three different cars. You can see one guy, I don't know if we saw it yet or, or you'll see it in just a second. One guy walks out the door. I think it's the security guard standing there. He just kind of knocks some of the stuff out of his head right there. It just happened right there. Wow, just try to keep that thief from getting everything. You don't expect to see that kind of thing happening outside of the city, too, because I actually moved in from the city just recently. So I thought I escaped all of that. Uh, apparently you didn't. Police did get some plate numbers. This is not the only Louis Vuitton store that was hit lately. Another store about 30 miles away got hit. Thieves took about $66,000 worth of merchandise. Police investigating to see if those two are connected. All right, let's take it to Oregon. It looks like a greenhouse. Yep, and there's a lot of green in that warehouse. You're looking at a half of a million dollars of processed marijuana. It's an estimate. It's an, the, the estimate is 500 million. Got ahead of myself. The estimate is 500 million, but it's a half a million pounds. It's a lot of marijuana and a lot of money. Police conducting raids on five industrial warehouses in the city when they came across the marijuana. Several people were detained. Some migrant workers living in the subpar conditions, including no running water. In Oregon, adults 21 and older can use cannabis with specific limits, but you can't manufacture it without a license. And finally, we'll finish with a feel good story. You're looking at one of the teams playing for a state title in high school football in California. Uh, the remarkable thing, all the members of that team, including the coaches, either deaf or hard of hearing. So they use sign language to communicate. They have never had a winning season. So not only have they had a winning season for the first time, but they are going to the state championship game. So they are just one win away from total victory. How about that? I love this story. We, we ran this story this weekend and talked about it, but I can't get enough of it. And I feel like this is a Disney movie in the making. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, sure. We'll see that on the big. And whether they win the state title or not, I mean, they already won, in my opinion. This is amazing things they're doing. I'll bet you if you say that to them, they'll say no, not yeah, yet. No, they're, yeah, they're ready. <laughs> they're ready to go. So, Thank you, David. Awesome stuff. Uh, Justin is here and Justin this morning on the early show we were talking about uh, it's a huge travel week TSA apparently mm -hmm. processed more people this past weekend for uh, domestic travel than they had uh, since the pandemic began. Wow. I'm not surprised yeah. and there's going to be some travel issues this week, especially as we get into Thanksgiving Day and Friday because we have a big storm system moving across the country should impact us a little bit here. Let's first start though with what's going on today at the airport. So far, clear sailing looks pretty good at San Antonio International. And as we look across the country, didn't see a lot of problems. Uh, places like Salt Lake City and up uh, across parts of Michigan, they're doing some de-icing, so that may cause a few delays. But all in all, looks good for, for right now. Of course, that could change a little bit later this week. And if you're doing some traveling across the state of Texas, this map shows road conditions, and it all looks good, except for deep south Texas. A little bit of rain on the road there. Shouldn't be a big problem if you're traveling across Texas today. It all looks good. Partly cloudy skies. Again, Brownsville, you may see some morning light rain there, but temperatures pretty mild. Should be a good travel day, and that'll be the case tomorrow, too. Here's a look at the time lapse. We have quite a bit of cloud cover earlier, starting to clear out a little bit. Sun starting to pop out. That will allow temperatures to warm up today. Right now, we're at 56. That front moved through last night, brought gusty winds, some cooler air, and some drier air, too. Still seeing some north northeasterly winds around 10 miles per hour. Cloud cover wise, just those thin cirrus clouds right now. We've had kind of multi layers of clouds this morning, but it seems to, in general, be clearing out a little bit. 52 Bernie Stage, 56 in New Braunfels, 55 right now in Skeen. A little thicker cloud cover down to the south, 57 in Uvalde, 59 right now in Carrizo Springs. Forecast for today. Up around 70 here in town. We'll call it partly cloudy. That sunsets around 536 this evening. Winds will be 5 to 15, maybe a few gusts up to around 20, maybe 25. Now let's talk dew points. 
It's dry today, tomorrow. Then the dew point jumps up Wednesday. We're going to see a pretty humid day Wednesday. That's going to lead to some morning drizzle, I think. A lot of cloud cover. And then our front comes through Thursday. That drops dew points, but we're going to get some rain somewhere near. It looks like Thursday morning. And then dew points jump off again before they build back by the weekend. So a lot of up and down here. And here's the setup across the country. We have high pressure out west. But this is what we're watching, this low out here in the Pacific. That's going to make its way towards Texas, not necessarily moving through, but it sits just to our west. And that brings in some energy. And uh, combine that with a front, we have some decent rain chances here. So today, quiet, just a few clouds. Tomorrow, quiet, a little bit uh, more cloud cover. And then by Wednesday, a lot of clouds, maybe a few showers late in the day. So this is Wednesday at 6 o'clock. By Thursday morning, here comes our front. Good chance of rain with this front, but I think it's mainly Thursday morning. So by midday Thursday, the rain's clearing out. Clouds may stick around, though, and it will be cooler on Thanksgiving Day with some breezy winds. Rainfall potential, it's still early. This is a rough estimate here, but up to an inch closer to the coast here around San Antonio, maybe a quarter to a half an inch of rain when it's all said and done with that front on Thanksgiving. Here's how the seven day forecast looks. 70 today, 71 tomorrow, 74 Wednesday, but cloudy and humid, slight chance of showers late, 60% chance of rain early on Thanksgiving, then turning breezy, a little cooler, 64, 61 Friday, and another chance for rain shows up on Saturday with a high of 60, guys. Something wrong with your turkey? Look at it. It's it's, it's uh, we call this the peekaboo turkey. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure what he was doing there. He's just kind of giving you a little side eye. He's not so sure mm, about the rain. Yeah. <laughs> not sure about him. <laughs> we love it. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> you got it. Still ahead on GMSA night, a preview of today's SA Live episode. That's right. Two organizations transforming a little girl's bedroom into her dream space. But why? We'll explain after the break. Welcome back, everybody. Today on SA Live, KSAT's Jen Tobias Strusky takes us to a family's home where a young girl battling cancer is getting a surprise playroom makeover. And it's all thanks to a nonprofit called Savvy Giving by Design and the Make a Wish Foundation. So they are teaming up to do a complete room transformation in one day. The makeover is part of three year old Elise Halden Wings' wish to have a safe place, a safe space at home. She's currently battling leukemia. I work with Savvy Giving by Design. We do room makeovers for children who are currently experiencing some sort of medical crisis at no charge to them. I had just finished or started my 13th year of teaching whenever she was diagnosed in the very first week of school. Um, so after we found out what all her treatments would entail, we I had to leave my teaching position in order to do treatments with her. So um, we've kind of been going through this whole COVID period and doing treatments at the same time. You can catch the big transformational reveal today, this afternoon at one o'clock on SA Live. It's part of SA Live's new series, Happy Space, where SA Live teams up with local designers for tips, tricks, and sometimes big transformations. They're sharing these stories weekly on SA Live right here on KSAT 12. Very cool. Well, there's still a lot more ahead on GMSA at nine. LeBron James in hot water this morning after making a harsh move on the court. David Sears has the full story coming up in your morning sports headlines. But first, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar joins Max Massey for his leading essay series, a recap after the break. 930, welcome back to GMSA. New government research shows Americans died of drug overdoses in record numbers across the country. In the 12 month period that ended in April, more than 100,000 Americans died of overdoses. That's up almost 30% from the year before. And we know drugs are a big problem in and around our community. That is why Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar joined us in the leading essay segment this weekend, along with Max Massey. Max has a brief recap of yesterday's conversation. Yes, we talked about illegal drugs moving in and out of our community, the problem that it poses, but we talked about a lot more. We talked about what that means for local law enforcement. We talked about some big issues that law enforcement is facing right now. Take a listen. We're seeing our, our you know, more than our share of, of cartel activity, uh, but also just organized crime locally. 
Um, you know, we have an organized crime group that was formed up, uh, reformed and, and formed up earlier this year with, with regard to that. We're stationed over at the TAG, uh, the Texas Anti-Gang Center. Uh, that's kind of a task force type setting, but we have a, an entire uh, group within the, the sheriff's office, uniform gang unit and uh, uh, plainclothes assets that are also working basically 24-7 to try to fight the problem. You can watch our entire conversation right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. There are two opportunities today to get your COVID vaccine or flu shot for you and your child. Metro Health will have a pop-up clinic at Northwest Vista College on North Ellison. It's happening right now through 3 p.m. It'll be in Mountain Laurel Hall, rooms 101, 102 there at Northwest Vista. There'll also be a pop-up clinic at Roosevelt High School on the northeast side over there, right off of Walsham Road at I-35, noon to 6. Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson Johnson vaccines will be available at both clinics as well as flu shots. They'll also offer the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. Well, tis the season for giving and there is still time to donate a new pair of shoes to our Share the Shoes drive. So far, people have donated about 400 pairs of shoes, but there is an endless amount of children in need. So you can drop off a new pair of shoes to any SAPD substation. We're looking for shoes of all sizes for toddlers to teenagers. All the shoes donated will benefit the local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services next month, just in time for the holiday. So we're taking donations through next Tuesday. Let's go outside with live cam. Justin Horn is here, and if you want to see this guy blush, his beard's better looking than Prince Harry's. Oh my good, that's wow. a compliment. Okay, feeling pretty good on Monday. He's night. blushing. He is feeling blushing. <laughs> By the way, but that being said, did you see the amount of money we've raised so far? It's incredible. We just passed ten thousand dollars for wow. Team KSAD. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, Mike got a big donation. What fifteen hundred? Mike this morning. did this morning. Yeah. yeah, there's some there's some big numbers on the board. It's just incredible. We really, really appreciate it all for a good cause, obviously. And uh, thank you so much for supporting our No Shave November. Okay, let's jump into the weather now. Uh, 56 degrees at the airport, 55 Randolph, 56 New Braunfels, 55 Comfort, 48 right now, Lost Maples. It's a chilly morning. That front blew through last night, brought some gusty winds with it, and that cooler, drier air. That's where we sit right now. A 50 in Junction, 60 in Del Rio, and uh, some low 60s as you get down towards Katua. Cloud cover wise, We've seen some on and off clouds. It's not going to be a big deal today. Most of it's the high, thin, serous stuff, so it'll be, it'll be filtered sun, but we'll get enough sun to push temperatures to near 70 a little bit later today. But right now, most of the state, in the wake of that front, dealing with some cool weather, 38 Lubbock, 49 Amarillo, and then the temperatures moderate as you get uh, farther south. We've got another front headed our way for Thanksgiving. That's the one that's going to bring a decent chance for rain with it. Some showers and storms and some cooler air yet again by the end of the week. Again, we're up near 70 today. That sunset is at 536. We'll still get some northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll take another look at that chance for rainfall over the uh, Thanksgiving holiday coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. To help families who may be struggling to put food on the table this holiday, a local nonprofit is hosting a turkey drive this morning. Members of the nonprofit Fuerza Unida and local volunteers are coming together to distribute 200 boxes that will be filled with turkeys alongside uh, with side dishes. Tiffany Wetfest joins us live at the drive this morning at 710 New Laredo Highway. Tiffany, who is behind these donations? Hey, good morning. Hi, Mark and Sarah. Isn't this incredible? Check out all these boxes. So many people donated the food bank, local businesses, and so much more. Check out these boxes. There's different things in them. We're talking turkey, corn, and just different stuff, stuffing items. And joining us right now is Maggie with the nonprofit. Maggie, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Talk to us about how this all started. Yeah, so this all started because we were approached by a local donor from a local business who wanted to give us the money to purchase 200 turkeys and to run a turkey drive out of Fuerza Unida. And who's going to benefit from this? I know this local community is, some people really need this this Thanksgiving. Yeah, definitely. So the people that are going to benefit are going to be members of Fuerza Unida, um, part of our membership, and then also members of the community, the local community. We've reached out to schools, we've reached out to local churches, so members of the Southside community. And this holiday season is very special, especially through 
COVID and everything we've all been through. Um, talk to us about what people are telling you. Yeah, so people are just telling us a lot of things like, one, it takes the stress off of finding the Thanksgiving turkey, which is everybody's in the store trying to get the turkey and you got to take the time off from work. You got to go right after school. You got to, you know, there's so many things to coordinate to get the turkey itself. So there's one of that. There's that that takes the stress off. And then there's the second thing, which is the feeling that somebody cares, that somebody's looking out for you. And after a year and a half um, of being isolated and being in your own space and being in your own home and feeling that lack of community connection, it's just really important to know that there's somebody, there's an organization out there that cares about you and that wants to make sure that there's food on your table and that you have a good Thanksgiving meal. And the need is absolutely great, especially yeah. we're seeing all these boxes, but you're telling me it's already, everyone is already booked for getting one of these boxes, right? Yes, yes. So we have um, made sure that we have spaces for our membership. We have about 100 members at Fuerza Unida, and then we reached out to the local community for them to come fill out a form and then get on our list. So they will all be arriving today and tomorrow to come receive those boxes. And this starts at what time? This starts at 10 today. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. us. This is fantastic. I'm so excited to be here this morning. And later on in the noon show, we're going to hear more from people that are getting these boxes and what it means to them. Back to you guys in the studio. Tiffany, we were waiting for you to kind of lower yourself back down Just here at the end of the show. Slowly. <laughs> there, there you go. go. <laughs> Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, That's Tiffany. Perfect. Awesome. 938, about 56 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9 on a Monday before Thanksgiving. LeBron James ejected from a game for the second time in his career. David, ex David Sears explains what led up to it this time next in your sports headlines. Well, I'm sorry, Cowboys fans. The biggest game of the weekend didn't end well for them, but UTSA keeping up with the winning streak. Plus, LeBron James making headlines this morning for all the wrong reasons. David Sears here with a recap of this weekend's sports headlines. All right, so let's let's start with the Cowboys. You know, a lot of times you play a game like this, they're taking on the Chiefs. The Chiefs started getting on a roll. And of course, they have Patrick Mahomes, former Texas Tech University quarterback, who's, you know, been to the Super Bowl and won one now. And Pro um, football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Gotta pay the bills, David. Oh, you gotta be quiet when that goes. <laughs> and um, the Cowboys were, were, I don't know what happened to the Cowboys this weekend. You remember the Bronco game? You guys remember that one? The Cowboys just got, you know, beat up and offense looked terrible. Yeah. This is kind of like that. Dak Prescott. Oh, that's not good. That's a sack fumble right there. Okay, so Dak did not perform very well. This is why I'm not 100% on the DAC bandwagon yet. You guys know that. I haven't jumped completely on the wagon yet because he does, he does that kind of stuff right there. The first pass, I'll just let these highlights go. The first pass he threw, he had a wide open receiver, could have had a touchdown, and he overthrew him by five yards. The second pass he threw, underthrew um, C.D. Lamb. So just he's not, he's not that accurate, and he was making some bad decisions, like that one right there. He underthrew that ball. The ball's picked off in the end zone. That's right before the half. They had a chance to score a touchdown before the half, and he underthrows it by a ton. C.D. Lamb got hurt on that play, so he didn't come back the second half. They already lost Amari Cooper for the game. So there's uh, a pick by the defense of the Cowboys. The Cowboys had a couple of picks. And look, they're down inside Chiefs territory. Do they get a touchdown? Uh, no. Had to settle for a field goal. They just couldn't get things going. So now the Cowboys lose to the Chiefs. That was 19 to 9 was that final. Dak was sacked five times through two picks. He missed some guys that were wide open, had some drops. Defense played pretty well for the Chiefs. So, you know, we've got to give them a little bit of credit. So the defense for the Cowboys played great. They had a couple of turnovers. So now they're seven and three. They still lead the East. They host Las Vegas Thursday for the Thanksgiving Day game in Arlington in AT&T Stadium. So it's Las Vegas. Las Vegas is struggling. Remember last week they lost, so they're struggling a little bit. So, all right, now I know you're going to be stunned on when we move to this one. This is the Texans, and we're actually going to take our time here and show a, little, show a little Texas. Look, there's a pick. Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback for the Titans. He threw four, count them, four interceptions. The Texan defense was all over the place yesterday. So that we've already gone longer than we have all season on Texans highlights yeah, right there. So congratulations true. to the day. Am, am I right? I told you, if they win, we'll stick with them. We'll show some highlights. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, they beat the Titans. The Titans were on like a six-game winning streak. And the Texans were on like a, uh, oh, I don't know, eight-game losing streak. And here's, here's the funny thing about the Texans. The Texans can actually have a winning record after all that.
Really? Yes. I mean, really. They're two and, they and eight. They've got seven games left. They could end up nine and eight on the regular season. However, they got to win out. They got, they've got some teams in there they can beat. There's Tyrod Taylor scoring a touchdown. Look at that. Wow. That's, that's a guy, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't look like you're one and eight when you're doing that kind of thing, do you? The guy's like willing to do whatever he has to get a, to get a touchdown. So, well, that's like a lot of Texans highlights right there. But yeah, they could actually come up with a winning record. And who knows the way the NFL goes. I guess they could make it. I'm feeling like that's the most Texans highlights we've run in years around yeah. here. Yeah. Just about as much as we ran on the Cowboys. That's what happens when you win. We show it. We Got like it. it. Okay. All right, so we'll move on now. This one you can never get tired of. This is Saturday afternoon. This is the Alamo Dome. This is UTSA and UAB. They're holding up the trophy because they won the Western Conference Division of Conference USA. Here's the play everybody's talking about. The snap. Frank Harris fumbles it down. Dip, tip, dip. I got it. Look at that. Do you ever get tired of watching that? That was, they were down, thir- they were down 31-27. Three seconds left. He picks up the ball. It's tipped and it's caught right there. How about that? And Me they rushed the field. Runners. Yeah, and they, and they rushed the field. So uh, Frank Harris was, was, I mean, you talk about keeping your composure mm-hmm. in a position like that where you have to have a touchdown with only three seconds left. So there you go. Um, let's go to Longhorns. We're going to treat the Longhorns kind of like the Texans. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah. That's, that's enough. We've, we've, seen, we've seen enough. Because I don't think Longhorn fans want to see this very much either. No, they okay, well, there's, there's a touchdown. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Let's, I don't even know why we got this in there. Really? Justin, what is this? It was a win. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's your Aggie right there for you. We'll take it. We don't care who we're beating up on. Terry View A&M. What was that? 50, what was it? Like 52, 52 to 3, three something yep. like that? Okay. Ouch. All right. Now let's move on. Let's, let's, that's the end of that. All right. So the first play tonight, they're taking on the Phoenix Suns. San Antonio starting a four-game homestand. They need to get it together. They've had like three days off, mm-hmm. so they've had a chance to rest. They've had a chance to practice. Practice? Yeah, we're talking about practice. They need some practice because they're like what four and eleven, something like that. All right. So we've got a four-game homestand starting tonight against the Phoenix Suns. So we'll get highlights for you tonight on the night beat. We'll also have a, a wrap up of that game tomorrow. Okay. Here we go. This is Detroit and L.A. Did you see that right there? Isaiah Stewart just got popped in the face by LeBron, and Isaiah Stewart is not happy facing off with LeBron, and he gets madder and madder and madder, and the guy just basically loses it. Watch him in just a second. Okay, his teammates try to hold him off. The referees try to coach him. Everybody's trying to hold him off because teammates on the bench can't come off the bench because they can get suspended. Russell Westbrook is not being a peacemaker, according to the referees. Look at him. He's just he's a mowing. The Cowboys could use him as a running back. He's just mowing <laughs> over people. Just trying to get after LeBron. He is so look now. Look at the blood on his face. Did you see the blood oh, running down the side of his face? Big yeah. gash. That's probably a couple of stitches right there. But watch, watch that right there where it circled. Bam! Yep. Just nailed him right upside the head. And you know, yeah, I don't know if it was on purpose. I mean, I can't get on LeBron's head. What was he thinking? He might have been doing it on purpose. So he leaves. But here, here's the amazing thing: is so Stewart leaves the floor. And they were worried about him going around the arena on the inside. You know, there's like a hallway that goes all the way around the arena inside by the locker rooms there. They were worried about him going around the arena on the inside, coming back out on the court after LeBron. LeBron got ejected for a flagrant two. Well, I think we said that was just his second ejection, ejection in his uh, career. In his career. So, mm. so there you go. But, you know, fines and suspensions are coming. Yes, he could very well miss the only trip to New York to play in Madison Square Garden this year. So we'll, we'll see what the finals okay. are. Okay. We'll but wait to hear from the NBA. Smacked him. Thank you, David. All right. Justin's here with a look at your Thanksgiving forecast. But right now, we are sitting pretty outside. Yeah, it is nice. We've got just a few clouds out there, some blue skies starting to show up, and temperatures pretty comfortable. We're in the 50s at this hour, 56 degrees. The dew point is at 33. That's a big change with north northeasterly winds at around 10 miles per hour. Front came through last night brought in that drier and cooler air. So we're starting off in the 50s. We should make it up to about 70 this afternoon. 54 in Kerrville, 58 in Divine, 59 down at Stinson. A few 60s on the map, but most of us, most of us in the mid to upper 50s at this hour. Dew points. In the 30s, we've got uh, dew points uh, 33 here in San Antonio. That's some very dry air that is filtered in behind this front. And you look at the 24 hour dew point change. Well, that's huge. We're down about 32 degrees. That is much, much drier air. We're going to get a lot of back and forth here coming up because we'll continue to get these fronts. And you'll see the humid air come in for a day and then get swept out by these fronts. So today is going to be one of our drier days. 
We expect to be up near 70 this afternoon. Some low to mid 70s down to the south. We stay in the 60s up in the hill country 65 the forecast high in Kerrville by tomorrow morning though it gets pretty chilly we should have some clearing tonight that will lead to temperatures in the low 40s here around San Antonio you'll get uh, probably some 40s maybe even a few 30s in the hill country 41 in Fredericksburg there's the satellite picture and uh, we are getting clearing across our northern counties still some serious clouds some mid-level clouds San Antonio down to the south no rain with these clouds and uh, we'll see a partly cloudy day, I think. As you look across the country, there's not much going on with the exception being the East Coast. So this is that front that came through our neck of the woods, stretches all the way up to New England. There's rain along the front. It's trying to move off the East Coast, and then you have some snow on the back side of it, some lake effect snow across the Great Lakes. But that's the active weather across the country right now. It's up there in the Northeast. Temperatures in the 20s from Chicago, Minneapolis. It's 11 in International Falls. That's the cold stuff. 32 Albuquerque, but uh, quite a bit more mild here in Texas with 40s and 50s. It's 38 right now in Lubbock. That seems to be the cool spot across the state, but it warms up for everybody by this afternoon. Forecast, nice today. No weather to worry about. The tomorrow, same story if you're doing traveling across the state. It all looks good. Wednesdays when things start to change a little bit. We get more moisture in here, so that means more cloud cover, maybe a couple of showers late on Wednesday, and here comes that front. Sink south, rain along the front, a decent chance of showers and storms, but it's mainly going to be Thursday morning, okay? So first half of the day for Thanksgiving. By the afternoon, rain should be moving out. Clouds may hang around, but the rain moves out, moves towards the coast. This is Thursday at 7 o'clock, and as far as how much rain we could see, it's a little early yet to be talking about totals, but estimates here up to an inch closer to the coast, maybe a quarter to half an inch here around San Antonio and points off to the west. Here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. Low humidity next couple days, 20% chance of showers Wednesday, then that 60% chance of rain early on Thursday. We'll get another chance of rain showing up on Saturday as well. We'll be right back. Hey, good morning. Coming up on live. Halle Berry talks about her new movie, Bruise, plus our good friend David Muir from World News Tonight. We'll see you soon on live. If you brave the crowds at HEB starting today, there is a sweet, sweet reward. Yeah, Bluebell. We all love Bluebell here in Texas. The Brennan-based ice cream brand says its newest flavor, eggnog, has arrived in stores today. That's right. The flavor consists of eggnog-flavored eggnog French ice cream, flecks of nutmeg, and whipped topping. The company said in a news release, but that's not all. They have also relieved released three other flavors also available. They two, are two other ones. Oh, so two others. Eggnog and then the other two. Christmas cookies and peppermint also available in stores starting today as yep. well. Now they Bluebell is telling us the three flavors are available in the half gallon size while supplies last. But again, you can find these HEB starting Today, uh, Justin Hoare, would you try eggnog Are you ice an cream? eggnog guy? Not an eggnog guy, but I am interested in the Christmas cookies. Christmas what does cookie. that mean? Like, what does Christmas cookies mean? I don't mean? know, like sugar cookies? That's I, what I was thinking. I'm thinking like a Christmas tree with sprinkles on it. Something like that. Good and if that. not, would you try the peppermint? Okay. Oh, I do yeah. peppermint for sure. <laughs> okay. What? All right, so is clearly eggnog? we're buying the ice cream this is year. Is eggnog <laughs> an alcoholic drink or no? No, it can't be. What do you put in it? 